the African Continental Free Trade Area Secretary General. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Master of Ceremonies, Your Excellency President uh, Ruto, Cabinet Secretary, Yona, uh, Vice Chancellor of the University, the senior leadership of the university, private sector, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, excellencies, high commissioners and ambassadors. I want to also recognize a uh, high commissioner of Kenya, to uh, Ghana, High Commissioner Marine, who's here uh, with us. I'm most grateful to be here today because of what Professor said, and that is that universities are at the heartthrob of societal critiquing and advancing uh, societies. And in particular today, the focus is on digitization and how we can ensure advancement of our continent, deploying digital tools, and enhancing our digital skills to boost intra-Africa trade. And allow me a few minutes to just set out to you what we have done in the AFCFTA Secretariat and what we will continue to do to deploy digital skills to accelerate the integration of our continent. In May 1963, our founding mothers and fathers met in the historic city of Addis Ababa. And the principal objective, of course, at that time was to defeat colonialism, push back colonialists. And as I always say, with the defeat of apartheid in South Africa, our founding mothers and fathers arguably achieved their objective, except one. And that is the integration of our continent. And so if you review the founding instruments of the Organization of African Unity, they say Africa must establish a single payment system, that Africa must establish an integrated market. This is May 1963. And so under the leadership of our heads of states and government, we are beginning to put into action those founding objectives of the Organization of African Unity. And what is interesting is as far back as May 1963, our founding fathers and mothers said, we have a continent that has 42 currencies. How do we make sure that we trade? Uh, as we speak in order to trade, if you are in Kenya, you want to trade with somebody in Ghana where I live, you have to buy a, a third currency. So we trade amongst one another uh, using a third currency and the cost or currencies and the cost we estimated to be close to $5 billion annually. So what we have done, working with uh, Africsim Bank under the leadership of Professor Orama, is to introduce to our heads of states and government the payments and, and uh, Pan-African payments and settlement system to enable digital payments in local currency, wherever you are on the African continent, you trade in your own currency. This is a significant uh, step forward in digital innovation, in ensuring that we, have, uh, we deploy digital skills and tools for inclusive trade. The majority of beneficiaries of the Pan-African Payments and Settlement System are small and medium enterprises and young entrepreneurs who cannot afford the cost associated with currency convertibility. This is a very important development in the history of our continent that resonates, as I say, with the founding objectives of the Organization of African Unity. It is, of course, a matter of regret that it has taken us this far uh, to advance on some of those long-standing objectives. The second observation, again in respect of uh, digitization and digital tools, the ministers of trade are currently negotiating a protocol on digital trade. That protocol on digital trade will provide the regulatory framework, the legal framework, the market access 
for digitization of the African continent, as well as establish the requisite digital infrastructure to ensure that the millions and millions and millions of young Africans who are at the cutting edge of digital innovation, that there's a platform to support their work. I hope by the end of the year, the ministers of trade will conclude negotiations of this protocol. Uh, and then we present it to our heads of states and government in February next year for them to adopt it and we begin to implement the protocol. And some of the features of the protocol include payments, uh, data flows so that data can flow, can be processed, managed, and moved around uh, the African continent. It is estimated that Africa by the year 2035 will require 700 data centers. And those data centers must be uh, located throughout the African continent so that we spread the benefits. More and more young Africans are trained as software engineers and we transition Africa's economy completely to become a digital economy uh, as is predicted where we deploy and aggressively implement the protocol on digital trade. And so Africa has an opportunity. We have a very, very unique opportunity in accelerating digitization. I was saying the other day that there is no reason why Africa cannot be as competitive or even more than Dublin on data centers, on management of data, and flows of data. This is the lifeline of our continent uh, 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 going forward. And so the, the, the mandate and what we are launching today under the uh, leadership of His Excellency the President entirely resonates and is consistent with not just the objectives of the AFCFTA, but the long-standing objectives of the Organization of African Unity. The third point uh, that I would mention, again in respect of uh, digitization and trade. Uh, President, I was invited by, by um, uh, Frank, uh, the former CEO of um, uh, Trademark Africa, then it was called Trademark East Africa, to visit the port of Mombasa. And what I saw was remarkable, how the East African community and Kenya uh, in terms of innovation for custom systems. You could be at uh, the port and there is a digital center that tells you how many trucks are coming in, how many trucks are leaving the port, improving the efficiency uh, to a very, very large extent. Now, if we look at across the African continent, the reality is that the story is not the same. So we have to rely on Kenya and the EAC to lead in the area of custom systems digitization. There are some parts of the continent where there is a one-stop border post. The immigration officials, the customs officials are seated next to each other. But the pile of paperwork is, is this high. And that is because of lack of interoperability of systems, lack of digitization of systems, to enable more efficient trade. And so we have a very ambitious uh, project to introduce digitization of custom systems, modeling on what has been achieved here in Kenya and uh, the East African community. Here, I was told when I visited the port, 15 years ago, it used to take from the port of Mombasa to um, uh, Chigali, Rwanda, it would take 15 days or 14 days. And today it's, it takes two or three days for those goods to be cleared and to arrive in Chigali, Rwanda, one stamp, um, a very, very efficient system. So the model of digitization uh, that you have developed certainly is a model that we should be rolling out uh, throughout the rest of the continent. In West Africa, Abidjan-Lagos uh, trade corridor, Distance is 1,000 kilometers, 1,080 kilometers. It takes 15 days and 37 checkpoints for goods to move 1,000 kilometers. Clearly, there is a need to improve uh, our trade corridors, looking at the success stories uh, that have already taken place across the African continent. And so we look forward to working with you 
um, as a university, as thinkers, as research, uh, to help us in the innovation of digitization of trade. We, I'm just a trade lawyer. I know nothing about digitization, so we require your expertise to help us to, uh, to advance. Let me uh, uh, close on this note. Uh, I mentioned 1963, May, the history of the Organization of African Unity and what was foresaw. Uh, last week, some of you may have seen uh, an article in the New York Times and it was entitled, The World is Becoming More African. And so the New York Times tells us something that some of us already knew anyway, but tells us that by the year 2050, Africa's combined GDP is estimated to be 16.2 trillion United States dollars. And that by 2050, the turn of the century, the largest working force in the world will be in Africa. And third, that the youngest population in the world will be here on the African continent. But these positive proje projections will remain nothing but that if we do not move aggressively to integrate our continent, to integrate the market, to become more globally competitive, and to ensure that we create opportunities for young Africans here. And so I am most grateful uh, the leadership uh, uh, of the African Union his Excellency President Ruto, every time he speaks, he mentions the AFCFTA. Uh, we were here a few months ago uh, uh, during the session of the American and Kenya Chamber of Commerce Summit, and uh, we listened very, very carefully to the vision that the President has in engaging the private sector to work together to create opportunities uh, here on the African continent. So I want to thank all of you very much uh, for your attention, and I wish all of us good deliberations over the next day or two. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency Wamke Lemene. At this point.